Hello everyone, and guess who's back? It's been a while, but Tom10 is back on the track now, and today we're going to cover how the data file works for bar chart face animation, the way how I see it, and also it will give you some brief ideas on uh, how it could be achieved in your own scenarios. So when it comes to dynamic data driven videos design, it's no brainer without the data, we would be no videos to build from. The one and the only important factor here is to develop a logic for data structure format which would enable you to reuse visual designs in the smallest amount of a must change it required. It's a bit tricky to narrow down in the first place but hey good things almost never come in an easy way right? So in this video I will explain the thought process for making the most out of the data file structures in bar chart face animation or any other animation which you foresee as a data driven design. So with that said Let's jump ahead. First of all, I would like to go one step backwards and uh, just explain how I reached the area where I'm currently at. It doesn't start with the COVID data. Initially, I just wanted to compare the countries based on some data in the time series uh, change. And uh, what I found is that there is an amazing website, World Bank Open Data, which offers enormous amount of various global development data catalogs. So in case if you don't have uh, access to that data and you don't know where to get it from, you can just go to the worldbank.org, uh, go to the data bank, and here, based on the selected indicators, let's say world development indicators, which I initially used, you can just browse them, uh, select uh, by the countries, by the areas, select specific time frame, um, yeah, the range of years, as well as the topic. And then based on that selection, once those three items are filled, you just download it as a preferable data file and work from there. My initial preference uh, was CSV because I used to process that CSV file in my own ways and then just convert it to the JSON because I'm the most familiar with the JSON format and I just like the way how logically it works. And what it eventually does is uh, creates an array item which is full of objects where all elements are included in a single object based by countries. So we can see that all time series are in the single object based on every country and just how the way it works. That said, it was the initial idea of a data structure and I just uh, started using it. And in fact, I just realized that uh, this could be reused um, in a different scenarios as well. Ideally, it might be even easier to just pre-process uh, that data before even working with it forward by separating uh, specific description items from the actual data ones. But uh, as long as you have a similar structure, or for example, you are using always uh, data from the World Data Bank, it wouldn't be the case for you and uh, you could just simply use it the way it is. So that was my starting point and I started um, from that data file and moved from there. Once you have the data on hand, then you can start to figure out the ways how it could be processed and uh, implemented in your workflow. Basically, there isn't one good way to achieve it. You can just manipulate the data the way it is comfortable for you to work with. But in this instance, assuming that you will always have, or at least for time being, will have all the uh, data from a world data bank, meaning that it will stay the same as you can see here, then you just can adapt to that structure and assume that it will work out in all case scenarios. With that said, since I was expecting to do that uh, in the nearly time, I just tried to manipulate the data the way that every time series key value is a digit as well as that key name is a digit as well. Based on that, from each object I collect the keys, which are numeric values, even though those are strings actually, but uh, just uh, parse the 
key names, check whether it's a number or not. And if it's a number, we just add that key value into array of elements. And that way we are just building an array of uh, every values um, for a time series, assuming that all the key names are numeric value here, because those are yearly time series. In the instance of COVID data, it was uh, daily values. The same logic applied, just uh, I was looking not for plain number, but uh, something which reflects similar um, data structure where you can see that uh, key name is based on two digits slash two digits slash and four digits. So that way you just look, uh, go through the whole object of elements in the object and uh, compare those names and assuming that we match this uh, specific criteria, you just uh, add picked value into array and you have every country separated into just stats values. And uh, talking about the COVID data, probably you already know and in case if not, everyone is using this data source from GitHub. You can just uh, download those files based on the time series in the GitHub. There are many ways how you can do it, but uh, in general, we just go into the file. In case you don't have GitHub installed on your machine, you just go to raw and just uh, save the page as and it will save as CSV. Here there are some uh, additional processing of data required because countries are based in the provinces. So if you are familiar with the Excel or other data processing like Python, for example, you can just consolidate the data and merge all the values based on the selected column. And that way you will just merge all the values together and uh, you will have all Australia's under a single um, row combined. So that's how the data file was built for COVID countries as well. And of course, once this is achieved for the sake of my own preference, I'm just converting uh, CSVs to JSONs and then processing them in the script. So basically to narrow down the whole process into a few steps, you need to have an idea. You need to append that idea with the data from sources, which you collect one or another way. I uh, definitely you can always web scrap and collect the data the way you want it in the time series you expect to have. But there are plenty of uh, different uh, areas and topics where you can just download historical data from time series and build various uh, data comparison videos. With that said, you just collect that data, make it to work it your way, and then process it in the script further. About next steps I will cover in upcoming videos, which next one will be about video settings file and how we can make the most use out of uh, combination from data file, video settings file, and a script. In case you haven't seen the original video of the whole processing of uh, bar chart trace animation, I will just add a link to the top right corner and uh, make sure to check it out and see if upcoming videos might be in interest for you. But for now, this was just an introduction how the data file looks like so you can have an idea how it's being prepared. But keep in mind that it's just a matter of how you will collect the data and how you will further down the line process it. No single way of how this can be achieved. It's just personal preferences and uh, convenience on how you prefer this to do. With that said, new video will come in a few days. so. It won't take that much time to wait now. And if you find any of these useful, just feel free to subscribe to my channel and um, I expect to find out more about not only bar chart rates animation because I'm getting a bit stuck with this topic for now, but I'm going to add additional tutorials as well. If you are interested in learning After Effects and uh, maybe some new unseen techniques, you can just subscribe to my channel and uh, we'll take it from there. Thanks for your time. And and I hope to see you around.